like I said, uh, this is our April. Uh, we moved it. Um, usually, we do our webinar on the first Saturday of the month, but um, I had an engagement and we had to move it to today. Sorry for that. Um, uh, so we basically uh, do webinar every Saturday of every month and we use, uh, we get one of our surgeons to join us. And this time is Dr. G, Dr. Gutierrez. Um, just want to make sure for the purpose of Rafa <clears throat> that you guys have either already submitted a health questionnaire or you could do it right now by going to mexicobariatriccenter.com uh, forward slash health dash questionnaire. Also, if you go to the uh, mexicobariatriccenter.com, there is a link to it. And just select Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez as a surgeon of your choice. And uh, one of the uh, just... Uh, to be able to enter to raffle for the $2,000 off of our surgery packages, you need to watch this webinar, be present to the end, and that's when we do the raffle. <clears throat> so um, these were for these, uh, if, you have, if you have HQ or you're on the calendar for a different doctor, we can still have you be eligible for the drawing, but you have you be having the surgery and the type of surgery that Dr. Gutierrez offers. Okay, so we would like to uh, we we always try to answer what we think are the most uh, asked questions, but if we don't, you can ask the, uh, at the end when we open up for Q&A, and you can type your question in the Q&A tab on your screen, and then we will get to it, and hopefully we will have time to um, answer all your questions. If not, you can reach back to us, and we would answer it for you through your coordinator or calling our office. The topics that we are covering today are basically about obesity, um, risks of obesity, weight loss surgery or bariatrics, and we talk about NBC, uh, Mexico Bariatric Center. What is it that we do? And we will cover all the bariatric surgeries that are out there and recover. Dr. Gutierrez will be presenting this section, all the laparoscopic versus endoscopic versus, you know, all the options. And we will talk about the importance of taking bariatric vitamins. And we will touch on that. And then we open up for Q&A session. Um, at that time, once we are done, uh, or pretty much done, we would we would do the raffle for the $2,000 off of the pediatric surgery package. Um, so we all know what obesity is, right? So it's a chronic disease. Is basically... Um, you know, the modern age plus our genetics that is contributing to this problem worldwide. And, um, you know, all the food, the fast food, sugary drinks, um, mm -hmm. ultra processed foods, and lack of physical activity. Um, so, the medical um, society basically has a definition what what obesity is based on a formula which you plug in your height and weight and you get 
body mass index. And basically they categorize us based on what our BMI is. Anything below 25 is considered healthy. Above 25 to 30, you're starting getting into overweight zone. And after that is obese. More than 40 BMI is morbidly obese, super morbidly obese, super, super morbidly obese. And as we will see during our presentation, there is no limit of what BMI we can uh, perform in our center. We could do a BMI over 100 and we have done it, no problems. Um, so like I was saying, you know, we know obesity pandemic or epidemic is contributed to increased nutrient content, lack of physical activity, Comfort eating stress, that's huge, you know. We all go home, we're tired, we start eating. And inadequate sleep, you know, fast pace, working two jobs. This is what also is contributing. And the drugs that we may take, those may contribute also. Um, when we gain weight, not only we get more fat cells, which is they call adipose tissues, the structure of adipose tissues are also changed. As you see on my right side of my screen that, um, you know, the, um, Sorry, Ron. I think it's it's muted. Your mic is muted. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I was saying, you know, as a result of the structural change of adipose tissue or fat cells, we become insensitive to insulin, leptin. We're not responding to therapies and we're not going to respond well to vaccination either. And the risk factors of obesity are, you know, there are so many uh, ways that we are affected by this problem. About 40% of Americans are adults. 40% of American adults are impacted by obesity. And I always uh, like to show this animation. There's a short animation that shows what happens when we gain in the abdomen. Again, you know, the effects of obesity, uh, heart disease, diabetes, type two, lung disease, stroke. Another problem is kidney disease. Kidney is kind of a forgotten organ in the body, but that gets affected. You can get chronic kidney disease by being obese and that can affect, that's actually deadly. You know, we always worry about our heart and we worry about, you know, so many, other problems, you know, your uh, arthritis, you know, joint problems. All this is coming from obesity. Um, impaired immune system, like we talked about, you know. Um, 
and 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 during the COVID, we found out that hey, the 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 obesity can contribute to death to to end up in the ICU, and the reason is again because once you have more fat cells, the coronavirus can attach itself because it's protein, it would attach itself to these fat cells. So the more fat cells you have, the more possibility of having this coronavirus attached to. And that's why there is a more problem with being overweight and obese. And after that, so we found out, hey, we need to live a healthy life and we need to lose the weight. So what are the, what are the possibilities? Okay, so at this time, the cure for obesity is again uh, the diet and exercise. Everybody tries that. You know, depends on how strict you are with diet and how uh, how long, how many times a week you can do exercise and how intense. And it turns out that diet and exercise is great. We should never ignore it. But if you are if you are obese. That's not a proven long-term solution to cure obesity. Then it becomes pharmaceutical. From the time, from the ancient time to this time, everybody is looking for that magic pill, to take a pill and lose weight. You know, of course, there has been some um, improvements and some uh, advancement in the pharmaceuticals and Ozempic injections or the, that category of drugs have been proven to be effective. But then again, is not a proven long-term solution. We will cover a little bit on Ozempic. And then becomes weight loss surgery. Weight loss surgery is a quick, proven, safe, and long-term solution. So that's what we're covering today. You know, we were talking about diet and exercise. So when you diet and try to lose weight, basically your body is going to react. How is going to react? And you will see why. And it would decrease your metabolism. It would increase your hunger. And it would decrease your satiety. And... Now we're talking about, so how does this work? Okay, why is um, bariatric surgery is effective? And diet ex exercise is not long-term. This is called metabolic system. Metabolic system is when you are, let's say this individual in the red is at 250 pounds, the body, which means your brain, and your hormones, your gut hormones, all your hormones are interacting around that thermostat or body thermostat, and that's your set point. So let's say we were talking about a good diet program and a very intense, effective exercise. And let's say this individual manages to lose 75 pounds now. But remember, that the brain and the hormones are still interacting with each other at that set point. So nothing has really changed. So what is going to happen is body is trying to get you back to that 250. How does it do that? It makes you more hungry and your metabolism goes down. Now, once you go through the operation, the minute they change your gut hormones and your inner working of your guts, intestine, your body resets itself at a different set point. So the minute you wake up from the operation, you are at 175 pounds not at that pounds, but you get to it, but your body thinks you're at 175 pounds. So what's going to do is going to reduce your hunger and 
increase your metabolism, which means you're going to burn fat, not be hungry. And that's why in the first 18 to 18 months to two years, you lose weight. And that's quick and stays like that. Of course, you know, we will talk about sleep versus bypass versus two then I'll switch and see how different they are and what you have to do to maintain that 175 pounds. So the scientists basically have been trying to simulate the effect of bariatric surgery. So once, let's say, if you get a, ga a gastric sleeve surgery, which we will see later on, um, you would have your hormonal changes. Then that happens naturally because of the operation. One of them is GLP-1. So the scientists created this artificial GLP-1 to simulate what body does after bariatric surgery. But then after the bariatric surgery, GLP-1 is not the only hormone that is changing. Then you will see Dr. Gutierrez is going to explain what hormone changes. So this is artificially, they're trying to simulate what bariatric surgery do. But so you're injecting these hormones that your body doesn't really need because this medication was really invented for people who have diabetes problem. And if your BMI is really high, this is not a um, cure that will, it will last you. So you have to keep using it, keep using it. And you know how the drugs are. They say, oh, it's safe now. But then later on in 10 years, they say, oh, you put all those hormones. Now you have these problems with cancer and stuff like that. They already know. Uh, some very small percentage of people may end up with thyroid cancer. If you have thyroid problem, you can't even use this medication. You know, there are so many other side effects. And then the side effects that we don't know, as a matter of fact, if you're on a Zempic and you are going to go through bariatric surgery, you have to stop at least three weeks before surgery. As a matter of fact, before any type of operation, bariatrics or plastics, you need to stop Ozempic at least three weeks before the surgery because of gastric emptying. So, so this pyramid shows the effectiveness of each cure for obesity, right? So the first one is diet and exercise. We talked about that. It only cures three to 5% of people long-term. And then we have the Zempic, Wigovi, Manjaro, all the ones that are coming up. So they're about five to 10%. As a matter of fact, you know, it was just an article came out that they said it would not work good for everybody and only for so many people. And then endoscopic procedures that, you know, there are, they have their place. So they're about 10 to 15%. Again, endoscopic procedure is not for everybody. It's a certain BMI, right? So BMI has to be low. You have to be uh, willing to change your lifestyle. So many things you have to do, but it is effective. Gastric balloon and ESG, which we call endosleeve. And then comes the definitive solution as of now for curing obesity, which is bariatric surgery. Gastric sleeve, RNY gastric bypass, duodenal switch, all these other that we will we'll go over. So, okay, so once you commit and you say, okay, the weight loss surgery is for me. This is what I'm going to be doing to change my life and add age, uh, add uh, years to my life. Then it's like, okay, um, is my insurance covering or is my insurance 
deductible is more than what, what I would get going to Mexico and getting this surgery for, with Mexico Bariatric Center. And at that time, we come into picture. Um, you see these individual doctors that are popping up and takes, take patients. So remember, so there is a pros and cons. When you go with a facilitator or coordination company like MBC, which actually, if you read CDC's recommendation, they recommend us to go with us, is that you're getting so many benefits with that, right? One of, one of which is the variety of the procedures that we offer. And we will go over that shortly to see what's the difference. So, <clears throat> And then you ask, well, why, why, should, why should we choose MBC? We are the best option as of now. We've been, I started uh, being in medical tourism in 2007. And I started MBC in 2012. So MBC has been in existence over 12 years, and these are not just numbers. Once we started putting these numbers, the competition is putting these numbers too. Now they're saying, oh, we are 25 years into business. Yes, maybe they were in business of selling t-shirts, but not in medical tourism. You just go back and see our track record. It goes back to 12 years ago. Um, look at the reviews. We're not just putting some fake before after pictures on social media. We have done over 20,000 plus successful surgeries. We're not just putting these numbers to just say, you know, it can be a legal issue if we say these things without having a backing for it. But the other companies do because they all imitate us and they want to look good but they're not truly say, they're not truly are what they say they are. And, you know, we, social media is a huge impact th these days. You know, you see how people, even for Ozempic type of uh, medications, they advertise, oh, like, you know, you lose weight. And so you have to be very, uh, critical about social media. The same thing goes when one surgeon goes and puts some before or after pictures that may not be theirs. They try to show, oh, yeah, you know, and uh, there's nothing really behind it. You have to dig deep. You have to do your research, find out if this company is really legit. NBC is equal to peace of mind. Peace of mind from the time you start talking to us to the time that you're done and after. We are here to support patients after bariatric patient surgery. We're not going to disappear. We're not going to let you down. We are a U.S.-based corporation in California. And since inception, our goal has been to provide quality medical care for affordable prices to people, not only in US and Canada, beyond that. So these are the highlights of what we do and what differentiates us from anybody else. Our reputation, or reviews, we are a Better Business Bureau member. Our packages are all inclusive. We don't say, oh, just show up here to the hospital or uh, reserve your own hotel or do that. You, the time you, we pick you up, everything, the, all the transitions is on up to us to do. And we have arranged it and we know what to do because we've been doing this for years. You know, 
I understand when you first decide to get weight loss surgery, you look at it like, okay, so there are Google AdWords, people pay to show up. There are, they make web pages. They give this company that is really good with web pages, make these beautiful pages for them. And they put some pictures in there and they show like, oh yeah, we've been around. They put some numbers, oh, we've been around 25 years. Yeah, they say we've been around 25 years. <laughs> okay. Um, we are the one of the long-lasted companies that are operating in Mexico right now. Our scheduling are easy. We have everything down to size. We get, take your health questionnaire. We run it by the surgeon. We, we've been educating people in US, Canada. We've been doing seminars, webinars. Our complication is one of the lowest in the industry. We give you support before and after, nutrition support, US surgeon liaison. And we offer medical tourism complication coverage optional at a discounted rate. This is a project, uh, Hospital Ozar, that I've been chasing for so many years and we almost done. Well, we're done with the construction. We just need to staff up and get started operating. This is going to be a game changer. This is going to be number one surgery center in Tijuana. Once it's open and it's not a hospital in a sense that we take, um, you know, um, people walking in with emergency requests or something. This is made tailored for medical tourism. This could be the first hospital that has been designed around medical tourism for weight loss surgery and plastics. And once we open, we would know you will know the difference. Um, some pictures of the hospital. I'm going to skip this. Um, Video and here early on, this is probably back in 2021 when they framed the project and basically Dr. Valenzuela was accompanying me doing all this design. Um, again, this, what you see is not just a number, is the truth. We've been around since 2012. NBC has been around 2012, 20,000 successful bariatric surgery performed. You, now, once we started doing that, everybody now is doing it. They're putting out 20, we've been around 25 years. Well, gastric sleep wasn't around 25 years ago, so I don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, so these are all inclusive packages, okay? It covers for surgeon fees, the hotel, hospital, nutrition support, medical tourism, which we call MTI. The insurance is not covered, but it's optional, but it's a great deal. I mean, that's just a no brainer to buy that. Um, and like I said, the getting approved for, with us is very easy. You do the health questionnaire, you choose the surgeon, or we choose it for you based on your needs. You pay the deposit, you are on the calendar. You arrange your, for your travel and you're there. Another plus for us to be with us is the support group. We have several support groups, one, is over 10,000 past patients. Over 10,000 past patients are interacting on a minute by minute basis. They, you can just see how they're doing, how they lost weight, how they maintain their weight. 
Here's uh, another plus. Past patients working with us to support you. Sarita, she's been around since 2015, I believe. She's been, she's been, she was a patient back then and she's still around with us working. She's on Facebook, Rena, Don, Kelly, Jamie. These are valuable assets to us, to you. This is Rena's success story with us. She's lost 215 pounds. And this is uh, another uh, plus that is our podcast that Rina and Sarita do once in a while. They're really informative. So on the day that the day before surgery, you fly or you drive to San Diego International Airport. We want you to arrive before 12 p.m. And your departure, we would like you to depart after 2 p.m. Some patients, if your flight is not matching this criteria, you may want to stay extra in um, San Diego. We have a deal with Hampton Inn, which is a beautiful hotel right next to the airport. And you can enjoy the downtown San Diego for a day and then get picked up the next day, okay? Again, for people, we want to make sure to enter to the raffle. You need to, to have an HQ in our system. So if you haven't done it, please do it. And attend this webinar to the end because we monitor that. Exclusive network of the best bariatric surgeons in Mexico. We have six team of bariatric surgical teams. These are the best of the best. These are not just some assistant surgeon that just started working. We see that often. They started a new company. They call them some bariatrics.com and they show these huge, you know, oh, we've done 25 years. They get, like I said, they get these top companies who do beautiful websites and they do pay Google to show up and there you go. But there is really, you want to give yourself your life to some assistant surgeon that just started working. They can't do bypass. I don't know how they do sleeve and they may not do it the right way. So here you go. Dr. Montalvo is a scholar. Dr. Valenzuela is our chief surgeon. She's been around since 2012 with us. And of course, prior to that, she was a surgeon doing bariatrics. Alejandro Gutierrez, which is we have a pleasure to have today, double certified. Dr. Rodriguez Lopez, our super surgeon. Dr. Usuna, she started working with bariatric patients in 2008 and maybe earlier. I know her from way back. And Dr. Jesus Seha, skilled surgeon. So these surgeons are very young, yet they have at least 4,000 surgeries behind them. I said at least. And this is just, we're not just throwing some numbers, okay? These are just real facts. So, and remember, this is a hand-eye coordination, which means you don't want a 60-year-old or 65-year-old do a um, laparoscopic surgery. So these people have enough experience like a 55 year old surgeon, but they are at 40s. There you go. Our approval is untouchable. We get the patient, we match him with the best surgeon for that patient. And our surgeon liaison is sitting, Jen is sitting between all this monitoring the traffic, making sure no mistake is made. 
Our pre-op diet is very straightforward, depends on your BMI. You may, if your BMI is low, you can get away with just two day clear liquid. And after that, you may wanna do a one week, two weeks, depends on your BMI. The better job you do on your pre-op diet, the better your surgery outcome is. It's easier on you, it's easier on the surgeon. It doesn't matter how much weight you lose or what your BMI is, as long as you do a good job on pre-op diet. And it's not very difficult. Just cut the carbs and take more proteins. You know, we always use top of the line surgical centers. And that's why we decided to start Azar Hospital to be, provide, to be able to provide what we are providing from A to Z. This is a game changer and we use Hyatt, Hyatt Place. I mean, we charging patients a very low rate. To be honest with you, this is the highest demand uh, hotel in Tijuana. I stayed, uh, I was there Monday uh, and I, 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 I landed in Monday. I came back on Thursday. They were charging myself $200 a night to be able to stay. And to believe it or not, they almost had no room and I had to take my stuff out on uh, Wednesday night. But then they said, oh, we just found a room for you. This is, this is where you stay, Hyatt Place. And, and another thing is you wanna pay, make your paperwork, finish everything as soon as possible so we can put you in here because the, if we don't send the reservation on time, they will not give us a room. So please, please complete your files as soon as possible. Make your payment. I, even if you're taking cashier check, whatever, show your coordinators, this is what I'm gonna pay. This is a picture of my cashier check. However you gonna pay. You pay credit card, pay it as soon as possible. The sooner you pay, easier transition for you to go get your surgery and come back. Again, remember, we want flawless. We want seamless experience for you. So please work with our coordinators to give you that seamless experience. Uh, medications, you be informed what to stop, what to start, when to start, when to stop. But NSAIDs and Advil and blood thinners, for sure, for sure, stop one week before. So that's the one thing, it's generic. But everything else that will let you know, if you are taking a medication on a regular basis, please take the bottles with you to Mexico, with you. Pack light, maybe just one small suitcase. Usually the weather in Tijuana is not extreme, even though it was been real, little cold this year, but now it's perfect weather. Just, just pack light, relax. You get to, when you arrive, we take you to the pre-op test. We take you to the hotel to rest. You get broth, jellos, ice chips in the hotel before and after surgery. And your companion stays with you the first night. After that, you go to the hospital, the companion stays in the, the hotel, but have um, visitation. Um, they get a very nice breakfast. <laughs> they start at 6.30. Um, I always get down and have their breakfast. On the surgery day, you'll be you be instructed to show up in the lobby at a certain time. You, you get your um, stuff packed, you go to the hospital. You stay in the hospital based on the type of the procedure you get, whether one, two, or three nights. You, they do all the post-op tests, leak tests, and you'll be going back home. 
you're going to go either you fly back home, you're driving back home. Some people do. You just be at the San Diego International Airport, which is kind of a mess because they are re remodeling or renovating the Terminal 1. Terminal 1 basically was only Southwest Airlines. Terminal two is all the other airlines like United, American, Delta. When you arrive, the driver is going to contact you the day before your departure and tell you, okay, this is my phone number, this is my information. Once you get your suitcase, if you check in your suitcase or you bring it with you, just show up in the curb, sidewalk. And he has letters on the sidewalk. You tell your driver, I'm on such and such letter on the sidewalk and they come get you. Very simple. Another, okay, so we talked about one surgeon versus a team of surgeons like we have, right? So we have what we call a surgeon's load management. So we give the surgeons every day a certain amount of surgery based on their complexity. And we don't, we give them time off. We give them weekends off. They can take a vacation because we don't have to work every patient every day because we have so many of them. And that's one of the reasons our complication rate is, not, is low. Now, if you go with one surgeon, they can't, uh, say no to you. So they do seven, eight surgeries one day and then one another day. And then they have to work on weekend because they have to accommodate the patients. That's one of the reasons not to consider those. Now, another huge reason why go with MBC. We don't force you to get a surgery which is not good for you or fit your needs or your body because that's what that's the only thing we can offer. Look at the spectrum of procedures that we offer. Of course, lab band we do not recommend, but we could do it. And then is a VSG gastric sleeve, mini gastric sleeve, single incision gastric sleeve, RNY gastric bypass, mini bypass, duodenal switch, single incision, anastomosis duodenal switch, which is one connection. DS, and all type of revisional surgeries and reversal of surgeries, all the VVG, all procedures, we, we recover, we redo, we rev revise. So there is no limit of what we can do. And then if you want the endoscopic procedures or we call endoscopic therapies like gastric balloon, ESG or endo sleeve and the revision of a bypass, the pouch of the bypass endoscopically, which we call TOR. So I, I see this over and over. They even book patients for bypass. When they get there, they say, hey, bypass is not good for you. We do sleeve. Why? Because that's all they can do. We see um, patients that are BMI, let's say 55. And they can't do a bypass of BMI of 55. So what they do is they say, oh, we just give you sleep. But if you really a candidate for bypass and you get sleep, look at what is happening. The same thing, maybe duodenal do, do, do switch is a, is an invasive procedure. However, it's good for a certain type of people. And to be honest with you, the, the literature shows 10, 15 years data shows that DS is much more effective after 15 years versus a bypass. So yes, It may be good for certain people. So if they don't offer that procedure, what are they going to do? They give you sleep or they give you bypass. But that's not really what you need. Anyway, so these are 
the reasons that you look into what we call, a, we are a one-stop shop. We can do all that is possible. Here I go, taking um, time. So Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez, he's a double board certified. There is not much I have to say about him. He's, his bed manners, his, his specialties, he's a fellow um, of the um, American Society of Surgeons here in the United States. And um, I would have him start talking about the different procedures and we can continue. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez. Thank you, Ron. Uh, thanks everybody uh, for being here, taking the time morning, uh, afternoon to some. Uh, so we're going to go and, and talk a little bit about uh, the procedures that, that we do. Um, this is just a slight uh, information. Um, so we're going to start with the gastric sleeve. Well, gastric sleeve is the most common uh, bariatric procedure done uh, worldwide. Um, it's, uh, they started doing it in 2000. Um, this is a, a simple surgery, if, if, if you will. Uh, to do, we just go to the to the stomach uh, mostly, and we're gonna cut like 80, 85 percent of the of your actual stomach. So um, the other part we're gonna remove it. We're gonna take it out. So um, the benefits of this is that obviously you're gonna have a, a very very small stomach. You're gonna get full very fast. And the other part is that that stomach, that 80 percent of the stomach that we take out, um, mostly the the well. Mostly the, the fundus of the stomach, which is uh, the upper part of the stomach, uh, produces ghrelin. Ghrelin is a uh, 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 hormone. Uh, it's called a hunger hormone. We have a lot of hormones, but this is uh, it's more uh, unknown. That goes into your brain and causes you that hunger, that binge eating sensation. Normally, the stomach produces, produces it uh, more when the stomach is empty. So after taking this part, you're not going to have that much production of, of ghrelin. So you're gonna get, not going to have that not going to have that binge eating sensation. So, so those are the, the, the goals. Um, so um, we were talking a little bit about uh, GLP-1, uh, Ocentec and all of those. Uh, normally those medications are, uh, they're, they're brand new and they are made for uh, diabetes, patients with diabetes. We do not have uh, longer term data uh, for, for weight loss, even if you go to the official Ocentec uh, webpage, it says um, it could de decrease a little bit of, uh, of weight, but it's not uh, um, a drug to lose weight. So it says down there, we don't have longer term data, so it can, they can have some, some problems. They see that they can, those medications could make you uh, lose a little bit of hunger and, and weight, but it's like 10 to 50%. And you have to take it out. So, so for the moment, and since 1991, from uh, our National Health Institute, it was uh, stated that uh, uh, bariatric surgery is the, is the best and the long-term solution for for obesity. So, so we can head to the other one. Normally, well, the gastric bypass, well, gastric sleep takes like an hour, 45 minutes. So, so it's quick. Patients. In all procedures, patients are walking two to three hours after surgery. We start uh, giving them eye ships, so you can start taking small sips of water as as soon as you wake up. So so it's it's not that invasive. We have a special uh, type of uh, gastric sleeve, which on the inside is the same, but from the outside is a single incision gastric sleeve, or it's called SILS. Uh, we use a special choker. Um, uh, special incision in the belly button so they can, they can be covered. So this is more uh, aesthetic uh, um, uh, term. Um, obviously, to do that, you have to have some, some, some uh, criteria. So you have to be a, a lower range BMI. Um, we have to check on the inside if your liver is not that big enough so we can go in and work on the stomach. So, but it's, a, it's a, a good option as well. And then the inside, we do the same. Results are the same. Okay, we have we were talking about endoscopic uh, procedures. Uh, we have a, a the endoscopic gastric sleep surgery. This is going to be like a applicature of the stomach. Uh, it has the advantage. All of this has the advantage of not doing a, a, a surgery uh, per se. So we just do a, an endoscopy. So it's less invasive, uh, uh, quicker recovery. 
Obviously, uh, the results are not as good as with uh, bariatric surgeries, but uh, for certain types of, 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 of uh, patients that are low BMI, uh, it works well. So, so in this case, we're gonna go through the endoscope. We have special channel, uh, special channel to, to work on the inside. So we're gonna do like a suturing on the inside, making the stomach, uh, if you could say, uh, smaller on the inside. So, so it works like the like the sleep. Okay. We have the the ruin wall gastric bypass. Well, still it's considered uh, the gold standard. Now some doctors are saying they don't call it. Uh, gold standard, but uh, this was the, the first surgery since 1950s that worked well. Obviously, at that time, it had a lot of complications. Right now, we've been doing uh, quite quite easy, low complication rate. Um, in this case, it's a little bit more invasive. We're going to go to the stomach. We're going to, to the proximal portion, we're going to cut it. We call it the gastric pouch. And then second part is that we go to the intestine since the beginning, and we're going to cut a portion of the intestine. So that's going to be the bypass portion. So we're going to cut the intestine down there. We're going to take the distal limb, bite it into that pouch, and the other limb, we bite it into the same intestine. So a big portion of the intestine is not going to get in touch with food, not going to be absorbing calories. So food is going to go directly to the last portion of the intestine. So obviously, in all surgeries, you have to take care of uh, after of vitamins, minerals, uh, protein levels. Um, but if you keep taking your 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 good uh, well good uh, diet uh, and taking your your vitamin minerals, have control with your primary care doctor with a nutritionist, so you'll be good. So, so just keep that in mind. Okay. So if you were say, what is the best surgery for me? We have to individualize uh, each patient. It's not the same that some patients, they have just a lower uh, range BMI, starting hypertension to other patients that had bad diabetes, uh, taking a lot of medications, insulin, um, sleep apnea with a, with a CPAP machine, uh, cardiac problems. So, so normally we, we take your health questionnaire, uh, we read it, uh, uh, accept patients, but when you come by, we're gonna do a, a pre-op testing, a complete pre-op testing, and and sometimes we we just get more uh, deep into your uh, held uh, data, and then we we say this is this surgery is gonna be better for you, or this surgery will be better for you. So so we can decide at the moment. Obviously, the patient, you is your body. You have to decide. You have the last word, but we just uh, give our 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 uh, uh, expertise uh, uh, opinion. So um, as we were saying, the gastric sleep, lower BMI range uh, against bypass. Um, if you have, uh, well, the primary, if you have bad acid reflux prior to the surgery, so it's better to do a one y uh, gastric bypass than a sleep. Um, with the bypass, you can have uh, um, a dumping syndrome later on. So just patients learn how to, how to take care of it. Um, not taking, not eating too fast or eating a lot of carbs at the same time. And uh, well, the results are, are almost the same. Obviously the gastric uh, bypass is a bigger push. Both of them are excellent uh, uh, technique and excellent tool. You still have to make some changes. We were talking about diet exercising. So that's that you're gonna continue doing that. Uh, but uh, this is excellent for you to help you with, with your health and, and, and losing weight and looking good. We have another type of, uh, this is a, a, a gastric bypass. Uh, it's called mini gastric bypass. Um, FDA approved it just uh, like around 10 years ago, I think, a little bit less, but um, it's a good option. They, they started doing it back in, in the US and they seen that the results are the same. Now on the results that we have are, are the same. So the difference, uh, it's called mini gastric bypass because instead of doing one uh, two anastomoses, which are two bindings between this, the stomach and intestines is just one. So it should be called one anastomosis gastric bypass. Uh, we go to the stomach, we're gonna leave a longer, longer, a uh, uh, little bit longer uh, uh, pouch, and we're gonna go to the intestine, the same, we're gonna count six, eight feet, depending on the, each patient. And the difference is we do not cut the intestine that we take it as it is and bind it into that stomach. So we call it an omega loop in surgery. So because it's like 15 minutes less surgery, 15, 20, 20 minutes, it's called mini, but
but uh, it should be called one NSM Basic Bypass. Excellent option. Uh, less complications, obviously, we because we're not gonna cut as much as the other one, but uh, the results are are excellent so far. Okay, so so the same the uh, between gastric bypass or mini gastric bypass. Um, normally, we have to take uh, uh, some some uh, criteria. So, for example, if you have, as I was saying, a, a bad acid reflux. Prior to the surgery, so it will be better to go to the room while gastric bypass. Um, sometimes, uh, um, in order to do both of them, we have to lift the intestine. And some patients have the a short uh, mesentery. Mesentery is like a fat tissue that carries all the uh, blood vessels from the intestine. So sometimes we cannot lift it, or it's too too pull too too tight. So in that case, uh, mini gastric bypass is an excellent option because we leave a bigger uh, a pouch. So less less chance of a complication. So um, it's mostly between those two, and uh, and uh, well, when you come by, we can we can talk about it about those two. We have the uh, DS uh, duodenal switch and Sadie's. These are more uh, like uh, more invasive surgeries. Uh, obviously, bigger uh, better results, long term results more chance of, uh, of uh, malnutrition later on. Uh, but it's for some certain type of uh, patients, it's an excellent surgery. So in this case, uh, what we're gonna do in the, well, in the Sadies, we're gonna do a uh, gastric sleep first, and then we're gonna go to the intestine, but in, instead of counting it since the beginning, we're gonna count it from the end, okay, from the colon. So we count like three meters, almost 3.5 meters, depends sometimes less, we're gonna cut the intestine down there, we're gonna take the distal portion and we're gonna bind it to the duodenum. So that's the difference, that's why it's called a duodenal switch. Uh, it has the advantage of having the duodenum, so it's a, a special bulb, less risk of, uh, of um, dumping syndrome. And uh, the results are, are amazing because you're gonna have just a small portion of intestine. Obviously you, you have to take care of your uh, diet more chance of diarrhea or 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 uh, stools that are uh, smelly or fatty, um, but you just have to take more care on your diet and taking my vitamins and minerals. But for a patient that has to decrease his his um, blood sugar, heart problems fast, this is an excellent option. Um, normally, that's a common question. How how fast can I return to work? So normally, we recommend uh, depending on on two types of uh, uh, the procedure that we do, obviously, and the type of work that you do. So if it's like a desk job, sitting job, uh, um, not carrying or lifting heavy things, so we recommend watch or two weeks. Um, some patients are working at a week after. Um, and normally that's gonna depend. Other other uh, type of work we recommend two to three weeks, um, but this is gonna depend on, on if it's a hard job that you have to lift heavy things, um, or kind of like that. Sometimes we recommend a little bit more, but in 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 uh, general we recommend like two to three weeks of of resting. Mm -hmm. Normally. Well, we have some lifting restrictions. We're gonna give it to you when as time of discharge. But normally, the three, first three weeks we recommend not to lift more than fifteen pounds, and then the first two months, no, not more than thirty. So, um, some special recommendations that that we started using since uh, pandemic, since COVID. So we, if it's optional, but it's better if you can bring your or, or wear a mask in the hospital. We have so. Um, still social distancing, still taking care of that. And um, still, uh, well, at that time, we we recommend patients to have their COVID uh, test done. Um, right now it's optional, but it's it's better if you can have one. And your vaccination obviously helps. Um, so to take care of, of, of yourself uh, prior, primarily. Okay, I think this gonna go into the financial <laughs> yes I appreciate your time and uh, explaining all these um, 
procedures for us. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So financing, our, our packages are pretty affordable. However, if you need to get financing, there are companies that we work with that are like outside companies, third party. And <clears throat> there are other options like SoFi. The best, probably best bet for you is if you have a connection, a good relationship with your bank, go through them first, like Bank of America, all the credit unions, they have good programs. And um, just remember not to apply for so many loan places at one time because they're, they're going to hit your credit score, okay? Okay, so MTI, Medical Tourism Complication Cover. So this is a service that we've been offering for a long time, but now we have it optional in our system for you to take advantage of. For $149, you get all these benefits in case, like $7,500 if there's complication, unsuccessful outcome, 1,250. So the total maximum, of course, cannot exceed 25,000, but these are the benefits you get. From the time you start your trip, you have this coverage until you go back. And 45 days after, anything happens, complication, 45 days after is covered. This is huge, I mean, for $149, you get all this covered. Just peace of mind, you know, to have it is better not to have it. We talked about importance of bariatric vitamins, okay? After you receive the surgery, sleep bypass DS, your, your inner working is not the same. You require certain type of nutrition and you know, you, again, when you have a sleeve, you cannot eat as much, right? So your stomach is maybe like four or five ounces. So now you have to complement what you cannot take with, with vitamins. So we strongly recommend getting Emerge. It comes in a form of soft chew, chewable, drinkable, and capsules. And you can order it online. Our nutritionist can help you with this. And remember, um, we all lose weight the first two years. That's our honeymoon. And to maintain this weight loss, you need to work on it. You need to change your lifestyle. You need, this is a tool. You need to make sure you know you're active. Yeah, you know, of course, every pound we lose, it, cre it makes our activity level higher and makes our activity, at, you know, the ease of moving around, it's just huge. So it's easier to be active after you lose 10, 15, 20, 100 pounds. You know, it's a different, this is a different uh, game when you lose that much weight and you can move around easily. So, and um, again, you know, um, uh, Emerge is one of the best uh, brands out there that has the right combination you need and the quality that you need. So we are getting to our Q&A session, which is questions and answers. Let's start uh, by Tammy. So Tammy is already scheduled for with Dr. Gutierrez. She says that I'm ready to start the journey. I've been cleared by with my PCP, an orthopedic surgeon, and I'll be working on my nutritionist with my nutritionist and weight loss coach. So she has two questions. One is I have purchased insurance for the surgery, which I already explained them out. MTI. So that's cover, uh, that. So what does it cover? So we already went over that. Also, if I get COVID before surgery, what happens? Well, uh, so that's actually a good subject. Please do a COVID test before your departure for yourself, 
and if you bring a companion. This way you are you know first of all if you have it and then you're not exposing anybody else. But you know um, we haven't had this happen for a while, but if you if you happen to catch COVID before your surgery, we will take care of you. So don't worry. Um, yeah. Again, there is certain anxiety, right? So, which I covered. He said, "Why do you, why do you go, why, why choose NBC for same exact reasons? So you be safe every way from from moving around in Tijuana, from the surgery, the point of doing a safe surgery, receiving a surgery." surgery this the the surgeons that we have offer you services that you probably won't be able to easily get in US or your hometown so not only you saving money you're getting a better quality of care when you go down there so remember that for this reason even even if you have insurance coverage you may want to still look into us for so many reasons and when people come down there and we see what we do they said this package is so affordable and you guys are doing a fantastic job you know they get impressed that's why we get so many referrals because they come in i was in the hotel this time like people Remember me from last year, you say, yeah, I lost weight and I'm, I'm here now with my daughter or my wife or my coworker. They bring, they bring their loved ones back to us and they come with them. So this is what you're getting. Um, so it's okay to be anxious. Yes, you're traveling to a different country, but believe me, once you're there, they put you at ease. You will be enjoying all this experience and it's a different experience. The experience itself is worth just going down there. And then Tammy is also making comment about our coordinators, Tatiana. She says she's been amazing. If the rest of your staff like that, we are in very good hands. Yes. We, our coordinators are awesome. And you know, I can't tell, you know, they're all very good. We work with patients because we, the, your life is important to us. So we're not like, oh, let's just take, get one more surgery. Okay. Um, okay. So Tammy is also bringing another, uh, point, which is um, in US, the, the criteria for BMI is 40, 35 if you have comorbidities, like high blood pressure, heart disease, but our BMI cutoff is at 30. And sometimes I have seen surgeons approve 28, maybe 29, depends on heart problems, blood pressure stuff. Yes. So, so you, you know, you just, um, the different system. So, okay. So Dr. Gutierrez, would you like to talk about our revision surgeries? So I'm going to let you cover that about all the revision surgeries we do. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, we do all kinds of revision surgeries. Uh, a revision surgery, it's, it's, it's called when a patient already had a, a, a bariatric, a previous bariatric procedure, and uh, they're, they're mostly regaining weight, having problems with acid reflux, have a, having other, other uh, problems. So, so, yeah, the revision consists in, in, in converting that uh, previous uh, bariatric procedure to another one, a more effective. So, so yeah, we do. Obviously, um, a lot of patients had... Um, lab bands. So we're removing lab bands because of problems they've been having or lacking uh, results uh, and converting to, to gastric uh, sleeves, gastric bypass, all type of procedures. Uh, more, um, 
a common one right now. It's the gastric sleep converting to a gastric bypass. Uh, so yeah, so so we you can you can send your health questionnaire and and we can revise it and and give you the best uh, option for you. Some um yes, so okay. are you done? I'm sorry, I had to... yeah yeah no, I'm sorry. Just gonna okay. add something. So we we were talking about quality of care. You're getting down. Our surgeons are dedicated bariatric surgeons, and that's all they do, and that's why they have so many surgeries behind them. In U.S., you may not get a bariatric surgeon do this. It could be a general surgeon doing all these other surgeries and they do like one bypass. Remember, the this is the data coming from American Society of Bariatric Surgeons says that the outcome and the, com the, the for the higher success and a lower complication rate, you need to have a dedicated surgeon, whether it's bariatric or orthopedic or what type of surgery it is, the outcome is better and the complication is low. The same thing with the hospital. If the hospital is specialized in one type of procedure, the outcome is better and the complication rate is low because they know what to do exactly with that type of patient. And that's why our complication rates are low and our success rate is high because we use we always use a dedicated bariatric center. And the same thing is going to be with hospital Azar because it's, let's say, uh, the type of a sterilization. We do the sterilization for bariatric patients. The equipment we purchase is just for that type of surgery. It's tailored around that type of surgery. That's, that's important. A sterilization is a huge part of the operation. Let's say the OR table. We purchased the OR table that has the positions that is good for bariatric patients. It has a capacity of 1,000 pounds and is wide enough for bariatric patients because they are high BMI. So as you see, everything is tailored around that type of procedure. And we're not just taking some walking patient. So, Okay, maybe Kaiser, I didn't want to name it. You know, Kaiser have sometimes do a general surgeon do bariatric patients. You're not going to get the same outcome. So there you go. That's a good reason to go to MBC. Um, So the people who join our webinar with anonymous attendees, we have no control to know who you are so we can match it with the HQ that you submitted. So maybe you can call our office. If you don't want to show on the screen, you can call our office and let us know. And our office number, Tatiana is on the call right now. 855-768-7247. Let me type it in one of these anonymous. So here we go. So 855-768-7247. Please call us and let us know who you are so we can match your HQ with your attendance here. Otherwise, we wouldn't know. Okay, so, and then, okay, so there, so not, because I mentioned about mini gastric sleeve, there's question about what's the difference, mm -hmm. how much do you take out between the two, sir? Okay, uh, so, well, the, the word mini gastric sleeve, it's been uh, around uh, recently even more. The mini gastric uh, sleeve is not a term or a, a surgery uh, uh, um, that's approved by ASMBS. But it, it's called when a patient, some patient can say, I don't want to take an eight, the 80% of, of my stomach. I don't want to feel that, that restriction. So sometimes patients with a lower uh, BMI, they want to 
take like, for example, 60, 70 percent instead of the 80, 85. So so in that case, uh, because of the patient wants it and, and if, if it's good, we can do that. Uh, so that's called amino gastric uh, uh, sleep. So obviously we tell them the results that we have worldwide. It's uh, done on an 80, 85 percent. So we don't expect that much uh, a result so quick or on long term. So, but if the patient wants to do it and feels uh, um, uh, safe with that, so so we can we can do a mini gastric sleep as well. So I have to turn this on. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> so this this person from New Zealand is saying that all the, it's 5 a.m. on Sunday in New Zealand, but all the information you are providing has been worth waking up early. Well, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um. Early. Yes. So okay. So we talk about the maybe the package or sleep package starts at forty three ninety five, and depends on the surgeon. It can vary a little bit based on their experience, based on so many factors. But they all, you know, few hundred here and there, they are around the same place. As far as the fees, the fees or extra fees are all the same. So if you have high BMI, there is a fee. If there is, a, let's say, if you need a hernia repair, that's another thing. Our surgeons look for hernia repair if you need it. And they repair it so you won't have any reflux later on. So there's going to be extra fee for that. So these are the extra fees. Or maybe if you need gallbladder removal, there is extra fee for that. So the package comes with a standard, let's say, if it's a sleep, standard, no BMI, gas six. Um, so what, Follow-up care is included once I'm home in Canada. Well, so we always have our nutritionist in our staff in our office here that works eight to five Pacific Standard Time, our time. Um, we have our surgeon liaison. You can ask questions, you can call our office. We can always reach back out to the doctor if you need any help that way. So these are just the support you get after, after you go back home. Um, Dr. Gutierrez, can you talk about hair loss after surgery? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question, a common question. Yeah, obviously, um, imagine that you're gonna go to a procedure uh, that causes anxiety and stress, uh, that's one. Uh, number two, you're going to change your diet. You're going to go into extreme change of diet, uh, um, uh, severe. So, so you're going to do a pre-op diet. Uh, you're going to continue on a special diet after. So you're obviously your protein levels are going to increase. You're going to have small stomach, not absorbing that much protein as, as, as prior. Uh, so you go into a, a temporary malnutrition state, if you, if you will. So, Normally, the hair loss is expected the first um, six months, between four and six months, um, but it's temporary. It's going to regrow, regrow back, and mostly we recommend for you to be taking care of your uh, vitamins, minerals, protein levels, uh, having a good diet, um, and, and your hair is going to regrow. It's going to become uh, thick again and uh, without any problem, but yeah, it, most of the patients can can have some some hair loss uh, a couple of months after, but that's it. Okay, so we don't require COVID test, 
the reason I said that is it's a good idea to test before your departure, but we don't require it anymore. Um, okay, so. Uh, so t they're asking about type 2 diabetes, diabetics and does the surgery resolve the type 2 diabetic? Uh, yes, of course. Um, we, we saw that after uh, right after surgery, uh, a lot of patients, they stopped taking their medication, uh, taking insulin if there were prior, and your uh, uh, blood sugar is going to go to a normal state. So Normally, we don't call it a cure. We call it a remission because your your pancreas is not going to be able to keep up uh, and do the same insulin. But uh, by that time, and at first, and if you take care, your your um, blood sugar is going to decrease normal level. You're going to stop taking your medications, insulin um, after right after surgery. So and so yeah we we normally we expect like an 80 percent around remission uh type 2 diabetes uh, uh um, remission or cure so yeah it's going to help with that it's going to help with um high blood pressure uh sleep apnea problems with fertility decrease uh cancer some type of cancer uh chances uh so and the list go on so so yeah it's going to help a lot so let's say if you are signed, if you have signed up to get a BSG gastric sleeve surgery with us, you you would arrive the day before surgery. So they, you stay in the hotel, and then two nights in the hospital, and you go back home. That's for BSG, and we did go over. Doctor Gutierrez went over how much time you need off work after each procedure. Yeah, so yeah, we, we talk a, a little bit about it. So normally we recommend in, in um, two to three weeks, uh, but that's gonna depend on the type of work uh, that you do and, uh, and the procedure. Obviously in some other factors, your age, uh, some comorbidities that you have, but uh, normally um, a desk job, we recommend water to two weeks. And uh, and the other type of works we recommend two to three weeks, the, depending on how you feel, and start slowly after that, and 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 that's gonna depend on that. So, can you also explain about the age? What ages? To what ages you qualify for surgery? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, we have uh, um, some uh, um, criteria. Um, in 2022, it changed a little bit. Uh, before that, uh, bariatric surgery was said that um, IPSO and ASMBS, that it was from patients from 15 years to 65. So right now, it, it it uh, changed a little bit. We can do surgery on younger patients, depending on, on the type of uh, comorbidities that they have, and on older per patients. Most uh, mostly, than taking care of the age per se, it's uh, something we call frailty. Frailty, it's your age plus your different uh, uh, diseases that you can have. So, but yeah, we, we do patients even I think uh, seventy two. I've uh, done so. So yeah, sixty-two years. It's it's good. So, so we can obviously we have to do our pre-op testings. Um, but yeah, I'm positive that you can have the surgery. Okay, so if your medical situation, like your medication you're taking 
anything of that sort, please redo the health questionnaire. Submit it again. We would we would merge it with your current one. So can you kind of because we Dr. Gutierrez already covered what's how do you determine whether bypass is better for you or slave is better for you? Also, when you submit your health questionnaire, the surgeon also reviews all that and has a recommendation for you. I, I understand um, financing could be different because bypass is a little bit more expensive, but even before the procedure, when you are in Tijuana, you actually talk to Dr. Gutierrez before surgery to make sure what you're getting is the most suitable procedure for you. So, and let's say last minute, Dr. Gutierrez determines, oh, well, you know what? I, sleep is better for you than bypass. We would give you sleep. And of course, we would refund you the, the, the difference. So, you know, they're just, um, you don't have to worry. But as far as financing, I don't know. I mean, again, you know, um, because your BMI is so high, doesn't mean that you have to get bypass. You know. Okay, compression socks. We highly recommend you wear compression socks on the way back home, especially if your travel is long. And if you're driving, please get stop by you know some convenience store and start walking same thing in the plane you know just don't sit down for hours and end get up and walk so the the bariatric vitamins we recommend at least for sleeve for the first two years bypass at least five years, and DS, life. So we have put, so we were talking about the companion visitation. So we made arrangements so the companions can go in a certain hour from the hotel to the hospital and back. But that's what I last heard. So I would check on that, make sure that this is still happening. So the driver would take you, I think it was five to seven or six to eight. I am not sure I have to check on that, but you can call back to our office and find out as I will find out, are we still doing that? Okay, so the cost of companion is, I believe, is $295, which covers the two nights in the hotel. For bypass, is a little bit more because it's three nights. Okay, so Dr. Gutierrez, can you explain? Because we always say gas six sleeve is smart, so it's not like you lose all the weight that you want. So if, if you weigh 180 and you just want to be maximum 120, it's possible because you have that tool, right? Do you want to explain about, you know, how much weight they lose and how they can control that? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, the, the uh, losing weight, it's going to depend on, on, on the patient. It's not the same, obviously, if a patient is it's bigger, it's gonna it's gonna lose uh, uh, more faster, and uh, it's not like a, like a calculator that that we can say before the surgery you're gonna lose sixty, you're gonna lose eighty pounds. So 
this is going to depend on different factors. The surgery is going to, it's going to help a lot. And um, normally in your case, 60 pounds, it's, it's reachable. Uh, I don't think there's a problem, uh, but you still have to take, in, take care of diet, take care of exercise. And mostly for a long term, uh, um, if you have a, a nutritionist, that's that's better. Um, but yeah, I, I think in your case, sixty pounds, it's it's very very reachable. And normally, what we want to, our goal is that uh, the first year of surgery, we want to get rid of eighty percent of our excessive weight. So getting almost as our goal, ideal weight. So some patients they do, they get to the ideal weight, but we want to get at least eighty percent of that. After that excessive weight, we got we want to get rid of it. Okay, so they're asking about referrals to plastic surgeon. We actually have plastic surgeons, board certified plastic surgeons that we work with, and to to be able to get to that department you need to go to mexico cosmetic center.com and i'm typing in here that website has all information about the services we offer and you can call text do the health questionnaire and get in contact with the coordinators for mcc can i die on the surgery table with bariatric surgery that's uh... well <laughs> yeah well it's anxiety and all that yeah well um any type of uh even any type of medication that you take can cause any uh, problems uh uh fortunately we have every very uh a few complications uh we have uh, less than the worldwide report data so and that's why we do all, all of this prior and uh, during surgery and right after so so it's it's very rare if you follow indications and um, and uh, and we the rest we're gonna be taking care of you. And as far as the follow up appointment, th th so there there is really no maintenance for bariatric surgery unless you do gastric banding. So all you have to do maybe the first three to six months do a blood test with your regular doctor your primary care physician and make sure your your vitamin levels are good, you know, just everything is checking. And then after that, just do regular checkups. There's really not much to it, you know. Um, and again, if you have any questions, concerns, you can reach back out to us and ask questions. So this is a five part question. How limited my water intake be before I can drink more? Uh, well, um, at first, if you have, a, uh, for example, a gastric sleep, you're going to get full very fast, obviously. But you can, I recommend my patients to have a bottle of water with them and be taking small sips. You're going to be, you can take the same amount of, of water, but just in small sips. And that, that's at first. Later on, you're going to be doing it uh, normally. Um, if if I may uh, reach to the second part, um, medications should be taken on an empty stomach. Obviously, it's the same as prior that you had the surgery. It's not recommended to have it on an empty stomach or or, or to take with some kind of food, and it's going to be the same. Um, uh, the, the third part, if vitamins are blended, it will be uh, as effective. Obviously not. Um, how well does the vitamin patch work? The vitamin patch uh, works, but as an as an extra a plus, we don't recommend it as a, as your your primary source of vitamins. But we have a different type of uh, it's not all pills. We have uh, sub two. We have different type of vitamins, even even uh, protein shakes that have vitamins. So uh, we have a lot of a lot of options, and um, it's no 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 problem on that. Um, when a person is obese and they lose weight, do they still keep the same amount of blood? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, normally, what what it changes is your um, your weight, but mostly on your on your fat uh, tissue. Um, that's on the outside, underneath your skin, and on the inside from 
all over your organs. So, but yeah, the malleable is going to be the same. I used to donate platelets regularly. And I was told that my veins is deep and narrow. Okay, because of uh, overweight. Um, yeah, well, right, a right after uh, surgery, if you keep losing weight, your veins are going to be as, as previous, if you remember. So, so they're going to be more uh, reachable. And, uh, and then you can be able to donate platelets uh, uh, as well. Was... Prior to surgery, I recommend for you guys to do a blood test before you come to T1. And that just be a, it could be a very simple blood test to show your hemoglobin level, especially for people who are coming back for revision, because you know if you have had prior surgeries, especially bypass, you may have low iron levels and your hemoglobin could be low. If you know it beforehand, you start taking supplements and take care of it before you come to Tijuana and we won't have this problem down there. So I do recommend a blood test to come before coming down. Um, So you, you did talk about revisions, but sleeve to bypass or mini bypass is a very common procedure we do if you haven't got to your goal weight. So you want to explain more on that, how to do a sleeve to bypass? Yes, of course. Uh, no problem. Yeah, normally what we do in a revision from a sleeve, well, you already have your, your, uh, your stomach sleep. It's a very small stomach. So to to convert into a room wide bypass, obviously we have to uh, dissect a little bit of scar tissue from pro uh, previous surgery. So uh, we're gonna cut the, the stomach, that sleep stomach, uh, almost in the middle, if you can say. So dividing into two parts, the proximal portion is called the pouch. So we're gonna go the same to the intestine. We're gonna count a, 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 a portion, a bypass portion to the intestine. We're gonna cut the intestine down there, bite it into that pouch, so that's where food is going to be. And the other portion, we bite it into the same intestine. So, um, so that's, that's mainly the, what we're going to do. So we get uh, um, more into details when, when you're here, if you want to. Also about the passport. We do require you bring a passport card or a passport book. And that makes your transition coming back to U.S. flawless. Please make sure you have that and talk to our coordinators if you don't. Um, Colin is saying that I'm very excited about my May 29th surgery. I've done Weight Watchers, all the medications, semaglutide, nothing worked long term, and praying for success, changing my life. And I'm having a surgery with my daughter on the same day. Yes. Again, you're acquiring a tool that can be a life saver and a life changer. You just have to work with your tool and um, just stay thin, you know. How big is the score for single incision gas sleeve? Okay, normally, well, the single incision, uh, the, the, the incision is a little bit bigger but than uh, the other uh, trokers. Normally, in when we do a regular sleeve, the trokers are uh, the biggest is less than half an inch, and the other ones are half a bit. So in, in case of a uh, uh, single incision, we do like uh, one and a half, you could say uh, um, inch wide uh, incision, but this is on the inner part, or you get uh, inverted into the the belly button. So, so the the goal or or, or uh, what we want to do is that to get uh, um, uh, in into the belly button, so it doesn't show. So for aesthetic reasons.
So if they have a umbilical hernia, do we ha do you have to fix it or if it's not bothering them, leave it alone? Yeah, this this depends. Any type of uh, of abdominal wall hernias. Um, normally, I, I tell my patients um, if it's not bothering, you can do it later on. Um, obviously, it, we 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 can do it, but your take uh, in mind that your pressure inside the abdominal cavity is increased, so you have a slighter chance that that um, um, hernia could reappear because of that pressure. Um, in some cases that they're having problems with it. So yeah, we did the same time, but that's up to you. You can, you can wait, do it later on, or we can do it at the same time. If, if it's small, obviously. Do I need to buy two seats for my flight? Okay, so I know like Southwest Airlines allow people who need more room in the seats to take two seats without charging them. But again, depends on what airline is more, more affordable and accessible to where you're coming from. But I don't, I don't uh, think that any other airline be, besides Southwest Airlines is doing that. Um, as far as tipping the drivers and staff, it would be nice to tip them. It's not required. And also, they take dollar pretty much everywhere in Tijuana. Remember, Tijuana is neighbor to San Diego. So a lot of people speak English. A lot of people accept dollar. So you don't have to convert. But... Maybe even if you, if they take you shopping, they do give you a tour of Tijuana, and I mean, you can probably use dollar everywhere. So, what is the lowest BMI for gastric bypass if there is no health issues? Well, that, that's going to depend on, on different factors. If you don't have any other uh, comorbidity problem, you don't have any type of acid reflux. Uh, so in that cases, we mostly recommend a gastric sleep, which is less uh, invasive to the patients. But, um, but, but yeah, we, we can talk it uh, more personally when, when you get here and, uh, and decide. But yeah, if it's like that, you, don't have, you have low BMI, range, you don't have any other uh, problem, the best thing will be to do uh, on gastric sleep. So Brian and Gabrielle are asking about what happens if you have complication when you go back home? What about medical tourism insurance? Well, medical tourism insurance is effective 45 days out after your surgery. So that's that. And what do you what do they do if they have problems when you go back when they go back home and um if so another question is do you have a drain in the stomach after surgery so yeah well yeah normally normally we leave a uh, we prefer to leave a drain uh there's certain cases that we don't but most of them we we leave a drain and in case of a, of a gastric sleeve, it's 24 hours, uh, bypass, sometimes 48 hours. So it's just a, a slight uh, um, discomfort, but it's better if we were to have an active bleeding right after surgery so we can tell at the moment, start doing special medications and, and treatment to help you coagulate. So, so that's it. So, so as far as complications, so there are short-term complications and there are long-term concerns. Yeah, I mean, I mean, immediate after surgery, which you are in a hospital. And then if there's any bleeding, leak, anything, we will take care of it when you're down there. Now, if you come back, if you 
follow up with the post-op diet, not eat anything solid, don't hit, lift heavy weight, just follow what we said, you know, to do post-op. You shouldn't have any problems. But if you do, depends on the severity of the problem. If you feel like, you know, if you have fever, things like that, you have to run to the uh, emergency room. And of course, contact us as well. And we will tell you. So, but if you know, like if your like incision is irritated, things like that, you can contact us, you know, just take a, to, or just see your primary care physician in case you need to. Um, Mark is asking, I have suffered from bulimia my whole life and I'm concerned about failure of weight loss due to binging and purging. Also, does the surgeon consult with me on the procedure the best fit me? I had colon cancer six years ago. I had a large hernia mesh implanted following cancer surgery. I live in Los Angeles. Can I use to drive myself to hide? Yes. So the last question I can answer. You, a lot of people drive themselves to our facilities. Um, so it depends, you know, <laughs> driving in Tijuana is not difficult, but it's not for everyone. Um, so if you're not used to driving in Tijuana, I would not recommend driving to Tijuana. So the best thing is to go to San Diego airport. There are so many um, parking, airport parking there. Just park your car, take the shuttle, go to the airport, get picked up and go. That's just one way to do it. Now I'll let you answer about bulimia and the cancer, colon cancer that Mark had. Okay, so yeah, the, the second part of the, of the cancer surgery, we were able to, to do a, a revision. Uh, no problem, we're just uh, gonna take care of that. The first, uh, from bulimia, uh, as, in, as well as any other problems with drug abuse or some kind like that, that's gonna depend on if it's treated uh, with medication and therapy. If it's out of control, we would recommend not to do the surgery until that's uh, treated because uh, high chances of failing or complications. So, so that's gonna depend on that. But if that's treated with, with your doctor, and your doctor does like a, a clearance, so we can we can do the procedure and and start uh, uh, this type of uh, of, of life changing. So, so that's it. Oh, good PCOS. That's a that's a huge um, subject. So, does the surgery help people who have PCOS? Yes, uh, greatly. Actually, it's recommended for patients with PCOS. Uh, polycystic ovary uh, syndrome, it's, um, it's mostly done by your uh, fat tissue, adipose cell tissues that uh, start uh, converting or creating more testosterone on your body. So that's all those changes are because of that. So doing a, a surgery in decreasing way, decreasing your amount of, of adipose tissue uh, um, it's, that's helps decreases the, the, the conversion of testosterone. So, so yeah, it's going to help on, on taking care of that. It increases the, uh, the chances of fertility and, uh, and yeah, it, it's going to help greatly. What kind of stitchers are done once uh, the seals, which is single incision laparoscopic surgery, and info on the leak test process? Okay, well, on the on the inside is the same. Uh, there's a, a lot of a lot of centers, a lot of doctors that since is uh, 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 the seals is you go through the belly button, so it obviously. To, to move the, the hands, it's it's quite uh, hard. So there's a lot of centers that are not doing an over stitch. 
on your stomach, but we always do that. And um, so on the inside, it's non absorbable suture. On the inside, it's going to be absorbable suture on the skin. So you're not going to have to, to go to a center or your doctor to take care of that. And um, and the leak test that we do, we do uh, two leak tests during surgery uh, right at the end uh, with gas and with metal and blue, uh, which is a special dye just to make sure that during surgery, uh, at the end of the surgery, everything's fine. And then we wait 24 hours uh, to let our stomach heal a little bit. And then we do another one. This is like a, uh, with a fluoroscopy machine, an x-ray machine. It's like a barium swallow kind of. So you just take two, two gulps of a... Uh, of a bitter tasting guy, we see it pass through, check everything's fine, and then right after we can start with liquids. So as far as payment, we can take payment all the way to the surgery day. So I mean, the day before surgery date, or actually, actually two weeks prior to the surgery date, because we want your balance to be paid or be taken care of two weeks prior to the surgery. Um, so, but let's say you book now for three months or six months out and you start paying every month or every week. Yeah, we, you can do that. But by the... 15 day prior to your surgery, the balance needed needs to be paid off. Um, will this, so Brandon is asking, will this fix GERD and sleep apnea? So I don't know what is this? Is it sleeve bypass? Um, you want to explain about sleep apnea and GERD? Yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, uh, well, um, sleep apnea, it's, it's um, related to to obesity because the same overpressure inside the abdominal cavity we were showing on the on the a presentation a video that that what causes that pressure on your diaphragm so it's a, a bigger pressure and and patients doesn't even though they 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 could sleep by like eight hours so they don't rest the same uh they are tired during the day and at night and their sleep, they're having some episodes, some periods of their brain not, not getting oxygen as well. So, so yeah, uh, right after losing weight uh, with the surgery, this overpressure decreases. So most of the patients, they get rid of their uh, CPAP machines and they are able to sleep. Even some patients that are very, very big, they have to sleep seated. And then thereafter, the most precious thing for them is to be sleeping in an, uh, an horizontal position. So, so yeah, that's going to, that's going to increase. And in case of GERD, uh, acid reflux, um, this is the same over pressure inside the abdominal cavity ca causes the acid to come into your esophagus. So we will have to see if there's no other uh, things because uh, acid reflux is a multifactorial uh, cause. So we have to take care on diet and we have to see if there's no hiatal hernia at the time of, of, of the surgery. But yeah, if the acid reflux, most of the patients with a gastric sleep, if it's not that bad, it, it, losing weight is going to help. But if it's very bad, uh, we can do a ga uh, gastric bypass. And, and yeah, that's going to help uh, greatly. One of the other benefits that you have with us is you get nutritionist webinars, usually like twice a month for pre-op and post-op. So you can attend those and get more information and if you have question you can ask at that time as well so about excess skin not everyone has excess skin you know it depends on your skin type your genetics your age how fast you lose weight so not necessarily you would need a skin removal but if you do you go through our mcc company which is mexico cosmetic center and we would give you mummy makeover or whatever you need um, okay um
Oh, what about smokers? That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, this is going to depend. Um, obviously, we we prefer for patients to, to stop smoking or, or do this l the less possible before surgery. Um, and right after, it's going to depend. And this is mostly on bypass because um, doing a gastric bypass, we're going to bind the stomach with intestines. So we, we have a slight chance of a complication, a long-term complication that's called a, a marginal ulcer. So if a uh, patient are, that smoke, they have a lot of acid in their stomach. So, so imagine going, well, the stomach can handle acid, but the intestine doesn't. So a lot of acid going to the intestine, it could cause an, an ulcer, right? right there so 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 yeah we have to quit or or decrease um before the surgery and right after a couple of months if possible okay so post-op diet is very important and is a four-week transition from liquid to solid that's very important and we will send you all the documentation for pre-op post-op again you have chance to talk to our nutritionist you will have a chance to get on our webinars to know exactly what to do what are the recipes you can do all that um, It's a very hard situation to do re-sleep, you know, not every surgeon recommends that. There are some cases that they can do re-sleep, but not really, um, depends on who did your sleep the first time. And So I had a gastric, Norma is asking, I had a gastric bypass and due to GERD, I had to, I had, I had it removed two years ago. I gained over 80 pounds. Would I still be at high for the, um, would I be at a high risk for any, any of these surgeries? So if they had a bypass, I think they got a reversal because they had GERD. So what do you recommend? Well, it doesn't sound that much uh, logic that for just for the gastric uh, reflux, they reverse it. Maybe normally the, the reversing is because you um, you lose a lot of weight and you get malnutrition. Um, but for us, the reflux, I don't find it logical. Um, we will have to see and confirm if it was a gastric bypass at first. And then second of all, why they reverse it and then... So we can decide uh, um, if you're regaining weight, what kind of surgery will be the best for you. Is this a latex free facility? Um, we, well, yeah, we normally use uh, latex uh, gloves, but uh, a lot of patients, they have, um, um, some uh, uh, problems uh, with latex, so we have all type of, uh, of gloves. So in those cases, we, in those patients, special patients with allergies, they, we, we do not use any type of latex. Okay, so, I mean, we still have 100, op well, a little less than 100 open questions. We'd love to spend more time. I know everybody has other commitments. So we maximum two hours we take for our webinars. So we really appreciate your interest and the questions, but um, I have to um, do, the, do the raffle now and end the webinar because that's how much we committed two hours at the beginning. So again, do not hesitate to call our office back or email us or text us to answer, to get answers to your questions. We don't mean to, um, you know, 
short anybody. I'm sorry that we cannot get to everyone's questions. So I have all the people who have their health questionnaire. Again, this is for Dr. Gutierrez. I do have all the names here. And I am going to take one name. Um, make sure I'm in the camera. Um, OK, there you go. So this is the name, um, Serena Four. Serena Four. And I'm going to look for you here to let you talk to us. Serena Four. I cannot, okay, so, sorry, not to go, okay, let's see, okay, all right, um, Anyway, I, I cannot easily find you. Uh, please call our office to um, to get your surgery planned and scheduled. I appreciate um, every one of you guys attending our webinar. And thank you so much, Dr. Gutierrez, for helping us with this. We would visit you hopefully soon in Tijuana. And um, good luck to everyone. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.